Joining us now from Paris, Rob Harris is a soccer journalist with the Associated Press. He was at the game yesterday. Thanks for joining us today. Good to see you. Okay, this was quite the story of the underdog. Everybody looking at this game said France is going to take this and it really won't cause them much of a sweat. What happened? Well, France had the whole power of the nation behind them and, and indeed the emotional pull of the last year or so in France, which has been um, really scarred by the extremist attacks. And then you've got, on the other hand, uh, a Portuguese side that's never won a title in, in its history and lost its only final in 2004. But they've managed to drag themselves through this competition. They won only one game in the regulation 90 minutes. They've had to go to extra time in, 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 in others. But they produced another doggedly defensive display to just really grind out and frustrate the French. And then they just produced that goal from nowhere. And I think if everyone imagined Portugal winning a trophy in this generation, they would imagine Ronaldo being the match winner. But it was a, an unheralded striker, Edda, who... Uh, who's really not been um, a significant figure, to put it bl uh, bluntly, in, in European football. And uh, he's the man who's managed to deliver Ronaldo the one thing missing on his uh, resume. That was an international trophy with Portugal. Ronaldo, uh, let's backtrack and talk about what exactly happened with him, because he got hit, went down, and then tried to come back a couple of times. It was actually, a lot of people were saying it was a dull final, but what Ronaldo provided in those first 25 minutes was just a spectacle of, of, of pure drama, the emotions of, of, of watching him writhing in agony, desperately trying to pull himself through to, to get that left knee recovered in time. He came off once, he came back on, he, he, he was forced down again. He then managed to come back on for a third time, but the pain was just too great and um, you could just see the how much it meant to him. He was in tears and you had teammates gathered around him just trying desperately to see if there was anything they could do to help him. And in that moment, he thought, really, have, have Portugal lost their moment? But he eventually came back out onto the sidelines just as extra time was starting, just before then. He gave an inspirational team talk, so some of his teammates say, and he really inspired them to find that little bit extra in the extra time to find that winner. But what we saw was maybe a glimpse into the future of Ronaldo, the manager. He was on the touchline. He was gesticulating. He was trying to power and drive his team to glory. And uh, he really managed to. And he's not always seen like the team play with Portugal, but with him forced off injured, you really saw more of that uh, coming through last night in uh, the Stade de France. God, the expression on their faces at the end of the game really did say it all. Uh, anything we know about Eder, by the way? Sorry, you just cut out then. The winning goal by Eater. What do we know about him? Well, he was someone who was playing for Swansea in the Premier League uh, last year. Then he was sent out on loan, um, actually, to Lille here in France. And then he went and joined them before the tournament. So the man who ended Port Port French dreams will be playing his club football in France next season. And this is someone who's only scored his fourth goal for uh, Portugal last night in almost 30 appearances. So he's not a star of the team, but when it mattered, he came through as the hero. And uh, there was just a moment of contrast just now on French TV screens. On one side, you saw the France players at the Elysee Palace with um, President Hollande being greeted. Um, and then on the other side, you saw the Portuguese players on their victorious homecoming. Uh, but I think the one overriding sense in France today is maybe not so much the disappointment of, the, of their team losing the final, but there's certainly a sense of relief that given all the security fears entering this tournament, the fact that the, the uh, month-long event just passed off um, peacefully in terms mm -hmm. of um, those attacks. There were some fan issues, though, which marred the opening week of the tournament. Yes, we do remember that. Rob Harris, thanks for joining us.